So we are focusing on solving linear equations when there's fractions involved. We just learned the magic trick method, but in those examples, we've only had numerical values in the denominator. In these examples, we're going to have variables or letters in the denominator. So let's go ahead and just jump to the first example where we see some variables in the denominator. Now, I'm going to use the magic trick method because it is a much better method in my mind. It gets rid of those fractions first and foremost, so we do not have to deal with them any longer. The rest of the process of the magic trick method is exactly the same as it was when we just had numerical values in the denominator, with one exception. If there is variables in the denominator, you absolutely must check your answers. Now, I'm not saying that you have to fully check these answers, but we do have to check and make sure that you do not end up with a denominator of zero, because we know that we cannot divide by zero. Anything divided by zero is undefined. It is impossible to calculate. So when we have variables in the denominator, we need to double check to make sure that we do not end up with an answer that makes our denominator zero. Okay, this is just using the magic trick method again. So other than checking the answer at the end, the process is exactly the same. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can get the answer to this one on your own. All right, the first thing that I need to do is come up with my LCD. So let me start by putting all of these in fraction format. Looking at my denominator, I have an X, I have a 2X, and I have a 1. So my LCD in this problem is going to be a 2 times X. Now I need to multiply both sides of my equation by this LCD. So I need to multiply this side of my equation by my 2x, and I need to multiply this side of my equation by 2x. On the right, since I have an addition, that means I have to distribute my 2x through, which means I take 2x by all of my terms or all of my fractions involved. So let me just write out that step. I have 12 over x times my LCD of 2x, is equal to 6 over 2x times my LCD of 2x plus 3 or maybe 3 over 1 times my LCD of 2x. Again, I want to emphasize that you're not actually multiplying. You're more importantly canceling to get rid of all of those denominators. That's why it's called my magic trick, to make sure all my denominators or all of my fractions disappear. So on the left, my x divided by x cancels out, leaving me with 12 times 2, or 24, is equal to, in the middle, my 2x over 2x cancels out, leaving me with 6, plus, and on the right, I cannot do any canceling, so I end up with 3 times 2x, or 6x. As you see at this point, I'm down to a degree 1 equation where I have no variables on my axis, so I can just solve this by isolating my variable. My first step is subtracting 6 from both sides. That leaves me with 18 is equal to 6x. Divide by 6, and that leaves me with x is equal to 3. Now, ultimately, we should actually be checking the full solution of this problem, and I will write out those steps. But if you skip that step, which I don't recommend, you do officially need to check to make sure that our denominator in the end is not equal to zero. So let me just write out the official check here. of 12 divided by my solution of 3 is equal to 6 divided by 2 times my x value of 3 
plus 3. Now, I know right away that I do not end up with any denominators to be 0, so that check at least goes through. But since I've made it this far, let me simplify the rest. 12 divided by 3 gives me 4. 6 divided by 6 gives me 1. And, of course, 1 plus 3 gives me 4. So that checks out, and that checks out my solution. So I have checked the solution, and I have checked to make sure my denominator is not 0. All right, so that was example one. Let's do the exact same thing here with example two. Now, I want to point out something to you here before I set you off to do this on your own. If there's addition or subtraction in the denominator pieces, that's like glue that sticks those pieces together. So this x minus 4, you must read as one unit. And this x minus 4, you must read as one unit. You cannot separate the x and the 4 individually. It might make it easier, but I promise it'll get you the wrong answer. So at this point, you should be able to solve this problem on your own. And I suggest that you pause the video and go from there. All right, my first step is to find my least common denominator. I know those x minus 4s match, but I also have the denominator of 5. So my LCD here is, is 5 times x minus 4. Now I know I'm really going to multiply both sides entirely by 5 times x minus 4, but I know over here that means I'll just distribute it through. So let me just start by multiplying each piece at this step by my LCD. So I'm going to multiply this guy by 5, x minus 4. I'm going to multiply this guy by 5, x minus 4. And I'm going to multiply this guy by 5, x minus 4. So this already saves me a whole lot of work because now I can start canceling. In my first fraction, my x minus 4s cancel. My second fraction, my x minus 4s cancel. And my last fraction, my 5 over 5 cancels. So I have here 5 times x is equal to 4 times 5, or 20, minus 4 times x minus 4. And I am not multiplying this yet for a specific reason. Remember in the last video, I told you that if you have a subtraction sign, you actually need to distribute that subtraction with your numerical values as well. So that's what I'm trying to emphasize here. I have to distribute a negative 4 through these parentheses. That leaves me with 5x is equal to 20 minus 4x plus 16. And now I'm down to just a basic degree 1 linear equation where there's no tricks involved. Combine like terms on the right. 20 plus 16 gives me 36. Move this 4x to the left by adding 4x to both sides. And that leaves me with 5 plus 4x, or 9x is equal to 36. To get rid of my 9, my opposite operation is division. And my final answer here gives me x equals 4. But before I box this answer and hand it in, I must at least check that my denominators do not equal zero, and I really should be checking my whole solution to make sure I have the right solution. Let me first just substitute it back in to make sure I have the first check. So I have 4 over 4 minus 4 in my first fraction is equal to 4 over 4 minus 4, and my second fraction, minus 4 fifths. And on each of these green ones, that's because I had an x in my original problem there. Now, notice what happens. I get 4 over 0 is equal to 4 over 0 minus 4 fifths. That definitely does not check out because I cannot simplify what 4 over 0 is. 
That means this solution is not a legitimate solution, so I cannot include it in my final answer. And if I don't have any answer to this problem, if I don't have any solution to this problem, my overall answer is no solution. So if you're trying to solve, meaning you had an equation and it didn't work out, your answer is no solution. If you're trying to simplify and if it didn't work out, then the answer is undefined. So it's important that you keep those vocabulary words separated. A symbol to represent no solution is a zero with a line through it, top right to bottom left, just like a no sign. So if you typically write your zeros like this, I encourage you to stop because that symbol actually means no solution. It does not mean zero. And zero and no solution are not one and the same. So we should not be using the same symbols for both. Okay, I'm going to stop this video here, but in my next and in my last video, I have one more example of solving linear rational equations when there are variables in the denominator.